This video takes a look at the OSD on-screen display menu system of the BenQ BL3200PT or BL3200 or 3200, whatever you want to call it. BenQ's nice big 32-inch VA panel monitor. Um, the OSD can be controlled by two different methods. The first method, if you just hover your finger over this area here, you can see these nice little cubes light up here with a sort of cool white glow. Um, these are touch sensitive areas and I find them fairly easy to use. They're pretty responsive. There's no real problems there. The first button, if you press that, it allows you to change the picture mode of the monitor, which is basically um, the presets. There are a lot more than three. I'm just at the bottom of the list here, but uh, these are some of these are looked at in the calibration section. Um, second button along lets you choose your input source for the monitor. And, and as you can see here, once you're actually a bit deeper into the menu, the buttons change, but, but, but everything's labelled appropriately on the screen so you know what everything does. Third button along is a volume control for the integrated uh, speakers of the monitor. I think off the top of my head, I think they're stereo 5 watt speakers. The fourth button along allows you to access the main menu system. And the fifth button is simply exit or back. And then there's also a power button which you actually press, um, it's not touch sensitive. Um, and that glows a sort of cool blue white just like the other buttons. Um, when the monitor's on, and it flashes when the monitor's on standby, uh, and then when it's been on standby for a little while or it's not receiving a signal from the computer, it uh, starts flashing a sort of dark amber colour instead. The second way of uh, using navigating through the OSD, which I actually really quite like, is to use this little device here, which, which just sits. Um, it sits on the base of the monitor, but you can see it's got a reasonably long cable here, so you can put it somewhere more convenient. And this has an OK or Enter button in the middle, surrounded by directional arrow keys. And it has one, two, three, and a back function. Um, there's a little bit of a description in the... Uh, review to sort of go through the exact functions of this uh, and what those numbers mean and everything but for now I'm, I'm just going to run through the actual main menu system. So as I say it's very easy to control using this little controller here um, so you can just quickly go on to the main menu. So you can see at the top there, it just reminds you what mode you've got the monitor in, what uh, picture mode it's in, which is user for me at the moment. Um, I'm just going to dim the monitor slightly because the uh, whites are sort of overbearing the camera a bit there, flooding things out. There we go. So the first bit of the menu is called display, and this has a lot of things greyed out at the moment, that's because I'm using DisplayPort, a digital connection. Um, a lot of these things are just adjustments that you can make on the monitor when you're connected uh, using VGA, which is an analogue connection. But if you're using a digital connection, it sort of sorts everything out itself, so there's no need to worry about this. There's also Auto Pivot, which basically means if you've got the uh, BenQ DisplayPilot software installed, uh, the monitor will tell the software once it's been rotated into portrait mode um, and that will basically make the uh, the image rotate along with the monitor so you can put the... I'm, I'm not going to do this because I, I don't actually have the uh, software installed at the moment but if I, if I was to rotate the monitor and I had the software installed the image would uh, flip into portrait mode which is a nice little feature uh, and then it would go back once you put it in landscape mode uh, you can also select the input, which is used by the monitor. The next menu 
um, it's called picture and it's got your basic picture settings so you can adjust things like brightness contrast sharpness you can select one of five different gamma modes which we look at in the calibration section um, color temperature again you can use a preset value or if you're on the user mode as I am at the moment you can actually manually configure the color, color channels you can adjust the hue saturation uh, some of these options actually I should mention some of these options aren't available in all of the different picture modes um, in the user one which I'm using at the moment they're all accessible but if you see some greyed out it's because you're not using um, the right uh, picture mode for that setting you can reset everything or in fact just reset the uh, the picture menu settings there if you've uh, sort of messed things up a bit and then there's AMA which is stands for advanced motion acceleration and that's BenQ's pixel overdrive or grey to grey acceleration feature which again is talked about in the review next we've got picture advanced and that allows you to um, as another way to access the picture modes of the monitor and if you if you select a certain picture mode for example the low blue light setting which again we look at in the review this is this is um, something that has a few sub options so you see the menu extends out a bit more there so if you select this using the sort of quick key feature and don't go through the main menu system you can't actually adjust the sub sub menu setting there so you see at the moment I've got it on reading mode but if I were to I could change it to uh, office web surfing or multimedia as well which are different settings um, you can see certain other features here are greyed out that's because I'm I'm running the user mode and as mentioned in the calibration section some of the features are only available in certain modes um, so if I select the photo mode here for example you can see that a few extra options are available there's Sensei demo um, which Sensei is just basically a BenQ marketing term for the, um, the feature that's associated with some of the picture modes for example the photo mode and all it really is is a, an extra saturation booster it makes the image look um, more saturated but less realistic so you can see on the left side of the screen what the preset would look like like if Sensei could be disabled which it can't incidentally and on the right side of the screen you can see what it looks like with Sensei enabled There's also a dynamic contrast feature available on some of the presets, which again is talked about later in the review. There's an overscan option, which is basically um, a compatibility feature for certain AV devices that you might want to connect to the monitor. So if you've got a PC connected, you don't you don't want overscan on because all it's going to do is uh, make the image extend past the bezel of the monitor, which is really no good for anyone. There's a display mode feature, it's quite comprehensive actually, um, you can see some options are greyed out here, that's because I'm running the monitor in the full native resolution, so you can't use this aspect or one-to-one -one pixel mapping feature. So this monitor does offer one-to-one -one pixel mapping, which means if you're running a lower resolution than the native resolution of the display, you can have the display so it correctly uh, displays all of the content without any distortion so it gives you black bars around the content instead um, you could also see there were a number of other um, options available in the display mode menu um, and these basically simulate a screen of different sizes it, it looks some of them look a bit strange because they're completely different aspect ratios and screen sizes compared to this screen but some people are, are very used to using a screen of a certain size or for whatever reason they just want to want to do that so this gives you a, a number of different options there's 19 inch square display 22 inch 16 by 10 23 inch 16 by 9 24 inch 16 by 9 24 inch 16 by 10 
and uh, some more um, 27 inch 16 by 9 27 inch 16 by 10 and even 30 inch 16 by 9 so some people might quite like to use that feature I'm not really too fussed about it myself Next up is the audio menu, which simply gives you a few quite self-explanatory options to adjust the speaker volume to mute the speakers and change the audio source of the speakers. Then there's the system menu, which allows you to change a number of different OSD settings. For example, you can change the language of the OSD. You can adjust the amount of time that the OSD is displayed before it disappears. And you can activate an OSD lock. There's three custom keys and the custom keys are when you're not in the menu the custom keys are basically first second and third buttons on the monitor so just to remind you by default they're picture mode, input and volume. But if you go into the menu you can change these so that they quickly activate a certain preset or they can be assigned to a different function such as the eye protect uh, feature which I'm going to talk through in a minute There's DDC slash CI, which is basically just the plug and play functionality for the monitor. You'll want to leave that enabled unless you're using some old legacy operating system that for whatever reason doesn't work with DDC slash CI. And there are a number of other features which are fairly self-explanatory. And Here there are controller key features which um, are numbered 1, 2 and 3 on the controller. So 1, 2 and 3. And they're something we talk about in the, um, the review and they're, they're very useful. Um, you can, again you can set these to give you a preset of your choice. And the reason some of these are greyed out is simply, it's not because you can't select them, it's simply because they're used by other controller keys at the moment. They're assigned to controller key 2 and 3. So that's a nice little feature there. You can reset everything to the factory default if you'd like. And then there's the ergonomics menu. And some of these... Some of these features aren't available in certain presets. I'm, I'm actually running the standard uh, mode at the moment, which gives you access to all of the ergonomic features. So there's an eye protect sensor, and that's the ambient light sensor of the monitor. And what that does is adjusts the brightness of the screen in accordance to your room brightness. There's also eye protect meter, which basically just allows the monitor to, to show you what the uh, eye protect sensor is doing with an on-screen notification. So um, now I've got that on, you'll see this little eye symbol here with a bar under it and that's basically just showing what the brightness of the monitor is and it's changing according to what this sensor in the middle here picks up and you can probably see that that sensor flashes intermittently when it's activated. So if I open the curtains here to let some more light in the monitor becomes brighter. Close them again, becomes darker because it's not having to counteract as much light. Um, personally I find the monitor tends to be a bit brighter than I'd like with this feature on um, but you know it's, it's down to personal preferences and some people like the monitor to automatically adjust when it's night time or when the lighting conditions change so it's a nice little feature. I'm just going to, nice though this feature is, I'm just going to turn it off for now. There's Smart Reminder, which basically just, I don't know what's particularly smart about it, all it does is remind you after a given period of time that you should take a break from the monitor. 
um, you can actually, it says here time interval, you can actually set that length of time yourself between 20 minutes and 100 minutes. I missed, missed one out here. Duration. Um, I have absolutely no idea what that does, I'm afraid. I'm sure the manual says, but uh, I'm not one to read manuals for monitors, I'm afraid. And the last section of the menu is Eco, and this gives you access to the Eco sensor. Again, which has a meter function to show you on screen what it's doing. And this is the proximity sensor, again contained in the centre of the monitor. And you can see again when this is activated the uh, monitor starts flashing. It probably appears quite bright on the video but the flashing is actually uh, not very distracting at all. I mean I hardly noticed it until I was recording this video and turned these features on anyway. But when these features are off it uh, doesn't flash incidentally. And there the monitor menu's just disappeared again. So you can set set the um, the range of the sensor as well. Um, it's set by to far by default, which works well on my desk. But you might be working in a, an office or a room where people are sort of milling about in front of your monitor, even when you've left and you're not at your desk. So you might want to use a middle or near sensor range to, to make sure the monitor doesn't pick them up and then activate itself. So if I get off the menu here and then walk away from the monitor and zoom in a little bit you can see that symbol there that's just telling you that the monitor hasn't detected um, anybody tripping its sensor and it's about to turn itself off. It takes a little bit of time so it tries not to go off with false positives so to speak. Still going. There we go. And now the monitor, you can see the power light of the monitor is blinking there which indicates it's on standby, it's in a, in a low power state but because it's, it's still getting a signal from the PC it's not glowing amber or flashing amber so if I return to the monitor after I've zoomed in out even if I return to the monitor it should spring back to life fairly quickly there we go that was the OSD on-screen display menu system of the BenQ BL3200PT. I'm sorry if that video was particularly tedious, long, boring, whatever else, um, but it's simply because the OSD of the monitor is so comprehensive and feature-packed, which is a good thing really. So it's, it's nice that BenQ have packed so many different features onto the monitor and I'd just like to reiterate how fond I am of this little controller here. It really does make uh, navigating the menu system a real pleasure. So thanks BenQ, well done.